to address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. Our guest this morning took over the reins almost four years ago of one of the largest employers in our community. The Department of Energy calls on Oak Ridge National Lab to lead the world in diverse research and development programs linked by an urgent focus on clean energy and global security. What does that mean? We're going to dig into specifics today with Dr. Thomas Zachariah, who is the director of Oak Ridge National Research Lab. A background in mechanical engineering and material sciences. Again, he's been with the lab in that position for almost four years now, but there for quite some time. Joined by our panel, which I imagine broke into a cold sweat any time they were asked to ask a question and answer one in math, physics, or science at the wall <laughs> in elementary and junior high school. Don Bosch is a, an attorney, runs his own law firm. He's a Democrat. Susan Richardson Williams is a Republican. She runs her own PR firm. Dr. Zachariah, you oversee uh, uh, a group of people that numbers more than 5,000, a budget of more than two and a half billion dollars. What is the one thing we should keep our eye on in the next year that you think will be coming out of the lab that is going to make people raise their eyebrows? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you, with all of you. The, mo the, well, the one thing that we have our eyes laser focused on is delivering on the exascale computing platform, the Frontier, which we hope to deploy uh, starting in June, July timeframe, and when completely deployed towards the end of the year, will be the fastest computer in the world. And so that is something that the department expects us to, to lead the world. Uh, and, and I would say that uh, in addition, of course, uh, the opportunity to contribute to, to the energy transition. So those are the two things that I would say we all should be paying attention to. And Dr. Zachariah, just specifically on that, we all like to be the fastest, the biggest, the best, but what is the benefit in terms of science to have the fastest computer in the world? What does that get the U.S.? Well, um, I think uh, from, from, if you were to think in terms of pandemic, uh, our current computer, which is the second fastest computer in the world, has been active in supporting developments in, in, in you know, solutions to COVID and other activities, new materials for batteries, new materials for clean energy. And so Frontier is going to allow us to advance the capability in a much faster time frame, given the challenges that face us. I'm gonna get our panelists in on this in just a second, but one other uh, issue that you've talked about is becoming an innovation city, and there are a lot of dollars attached to that designation. Explain what that means and what it might mean for this community. Well, I think this is something that I'm particularly excited about. Uh, we have been actually thinking about this for a couple of years, actively working for a couple of years. Uh, the idea of place-based innovation is something top of mind and and so i've you know i've been in this community i've, I've been be i've benefited from this community for the last 30 plus years uh working here at the laboratory and i've always been intrigued by the fact that here is our city where the university of tennessee coexists with tva and oak ridge national laboratory in y12 uh, plus a number of innovative companies that have come out of our our city and yet we have not broken out into this leading innovation cities and and so the idea of creating a place-based innovation ecosystem built on the capability and investments that have been made at Oak Ridge National Laboratory but also leveraging the University of Tennessee TVA and all the other assets that we have is something top of mind and as you mentioned there is clear interest in in investing in such such, such cities there's been a number of recommendations of creating 10 such cities so, so that we can continue to scale the innovation beyond just the 40 or so counties or half a dozen cities that we currently have where most of the innovation jobs are concentrated. Susan? Yeah, Dr. Zachariah, one of those uh, joint ventures between the University of Tennessee and ORNL is the newly formed Oak Ridge Institute at UT. Could you talk about that, and what do you expect to come from that uh, venture? Well, so one of the things that I, uh, you know, we have heard all the, you know, with the, with the current administration, we've heard about 
a comparison to New Deal, which created T Tennessee Valley Authority, and then uh, also the Manhattan Project. I try to remind people during the Manhattan Project, we had about 70,000 people at Oak Ridge working, racing to, to make the innovations that is necessary to win, win the war. And if, if you're comparing to Manhattan type project today, we are at a high water mark of over 5,500 staff. And if you compare to those kinds of, uh, you know, initiatives, you know, we, even if you were to double uh, our, the talented staff that we needed at Oak Ridge and other laboratories around the system and even universities, we need to create the pipeline of next generation students in the industries of the future. And I think the Oak Ridge Institute at the University of Tennessee is a partnership between UT and ORNL to attract, train, and the next generation of innovators and scientists and faculty members who's going to help us achieve our goals. Fascinating. One of my uh, favorite topics is electric vehicles. And I had one of the first ones, a LEAF. Um, and I know it's, it's a priority of President Biden's. Um, are you all doing your, I know you're doing research on EVs. When, when do you expect to see that become commonplace in our country? I think, I think uh, certainly over the next decade, if you just look at just what the car automotive in, uh, industries have, uh, have declared as their uh, plans for the next coming decade, five to 10 years, it's very clear that we are going to move to an electric vehicle fleet. And the reason is very simple. Um, in addition to our own needs, uh, our companies have to compete globally. And because our companies, for them to be successful, not only do they have to sell to the American market, but also they have to sell globally. And globally, you know, the, the big populations, India, China, Europe, they all have policies that require uh, essentially electric vehicles, a significant penetration of electric, electric vehicles in their fleet. Secondly, the technology has advanced and progressed dramatically to where it is going to become much more commonplace. As you well know, the Volkswagen plant in, in Chattanooga is going to start producing electric vehicles. Almost all the American manufacturers have now uh, a, a number of uh, product lines that are fully electric vehicles. So I think it is in our future. I also was one of the early adopters of uh, a Nissan Leaf. And it's actually fascinating, even though it had only a range of about uh, under 100 miles, we still put 15,000 miles on that car mm -hmm. just by you know, driving to work uh, and then going to Farragut and doing our shopping and going home. So uh, today's cars have easily 200, 300, 400 miles range, and I think it is going to be very well part of our, our fleet. Maybe we'll have initially an electric vehicle plus a gas just for long range type of uh, travel. John Bosch will bring you in the conversation when we take a quick break. Uh, we'll be back with Dr. Thomas Zachariah, the director of ORNL, right after this.